Welcome to the Back to the Future episode one DVD commentary track. Uh, I'm Mike Stemley, designer. I'm JD Straw, I'm another designer. I'm Dennis Lennart, I directed the episode. I'm Andy Hartzell, I'm another designer. Eric Parsons, a cinematic artist. Peter Sakel, animator. I'm Randy Tudor, lead programmer. And what we're looking at right now is the wonderful and insane prologue. Uh, we spent uh, a long time coming up with a very, very complicated prologue for a while, which involved a whole bunch of docs doing a whole bunch of weird things. Which I rewrote three times. <laughs> and, and then we said... And it got better each time. And then we said, hey, we should do the really cool, obvious opening that would be even better and would get people really excited about coming on in. Uh, with the actual first uh, time traveling scene from the movie. And it took me a very long time. I think only now am I finally coming around to <laughs> appreciating the wisdom of the decision. I don't know if I will ever fully appreciate it. <laughs> Once we realized we wanted to do something like this, uh, we realized that in order to make it really, really cool, we'd do it from the perspective of the video camera that uh, Marty turns on in this scene. And it made it... Uh, you know, very, very different and Penny wonderful. You know, I, I laid out the, uh, the first pass of the characters' positions and the camera work on this, and I immediately realized you cheat position a lot when you, when you make a film. <laughs> yeah. And you can't cheat it anymore when you do it through the video camera. So, uh, thank you. Yay. So then we decided, well, we won't make the whole thing in black and white. We'll, we'll make part of it in color, so. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, uh, Myas and Torsten um, did a lot of really awesome stuff on this sequence to make it, uh, it's, it's tough when you're trying to replicate the movie because obviously everyone knows what that looks like and now we're trying to take our stylized characters, um, but I think they ended up doing a really good job. Myas and Torsten are exchange uh, choreographers <laughs> from, from Germany, Germany who this was their, what, uh, this was their big, uh, their first big uh, chance to, well, no, they did no, a lot of work Max, Max, yeah. 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 But this but, uh, is definitely Mayas, a dream come true for them, too. Yeah, yeah. Much like both Back they, to the Future fans, and quite a bit. Mayas yeah. is a huge Back to the Future fan as well. well I think what's good about this sequence is it really showcases uh, a lot of the elements that we tried very hard to stay faithful to the, to the license, everything from the car to the mall to the the outfits to Doc's truck to Einstein, we, uh, you know, and it ended in Marty's bedroom. <laughs> there was a lot of effort that went into Marty's bedroom. Although and apparently Guybrush, on the back apparently the Guybrush three print starred in uh, Weird Science. I yeah. uh, <laughs> don't know what that all is about. And, uh, Doc was there. Yeah, it was uh, like this opening <clears throat> just for um, well, the idea that we kind of now. like really that remind fans that we. Six. We've seen the movies a million times, and our attention to detail is there, and kind of having, you know, play out similar to the actual film, and then do the little twist there. It's just kind of a fun. Uh, it's such a careful thing. balance trying to decide how much of the movies we expected our audience to actually watch and uh, remember, and then how much new stuff we wanted to give them, new characterizations. Dad. Uh, seems like a good time to talk about how. Uh, AJ Lucassie. <laughs> oh, AJ. Yes. He was I, absurdly great as uh, Marty. Uh, Is there anyone who doesn't know the story of AJ Lucasio at this point? <laughs> Is there anyone in America who doesn't know? Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to tell it for everyone? Well, when we were we were looking for somebody to voice uh, Marty McFly, we put out the uh, the casting call, and, and AJ Locasio heard about it from his friends, who a recent graduate from film school in New York, uh, had really no experience in the industry, but was known in a circle of friends for his uncanny Marty McFly impersonation, and he was convinced he was he was just moving to the West Coast from the East Coast. His friends convinced him to turn in uh, an audition, and. Uh, and he nailed it. And, and uh, um, we, I don't know where we would have been without him. Yeah, yeah he, uh, he definitely embodied the 17 year old Marty voice perfectly. And I was actually just gonna, uh, we sort of missed it, but uh, Brian Gillies modeling the, uh, the little uh, mind reading helmet slash beer yeah. helmet yeah. was <laughs> the total sort of typical telltale late night random idea. And then Brian saying like, yeah, that's funny. I'll come in on the weekend and do that. <laughs> And do you want to talk about Einstein? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the dog. 
<laughs> Actually, that was one of the things very early on. There was the we get latched onto the idea of, yeah, maybe opens the door and the dog's in there uh, between us and Bob Gale, who uh, came in and helped a lot on yeah. uh, story <clears throat> consulting. And Bob Gale, um, one of his principles early on was, you got to have the dog in there because people who like dogs are good and people who don't <laughs> like dogs are bad. Yeah. And uh, I'm um, a cat person. <laughs> <laughs> but we all know you're bad. But um, uh, at, at one point, we polled uh, a playtest audience for who their favorite character was, and, and I don't remember which episode it was, but I don't know, but Einstein, I think, won. <laughs> Maybe Marty won and Einstein was second. I don't remember. Um, getting a little bit of skateboarding in there. Yeah. I, I always <laughs> wish there was more. Yeah. 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 We this, kept trying to put it in and it kept getting uh, yeah. no time. This is Rebecca Schweitzer as old Edna. Uh, you may remember her as Mole Girl. Uh, <laughs> From Sam Max, season yeah. three. Uh, this might be a good uh, uh, point to just talk about the the 80s, which we're almost uh, we've almost left the 80s already. But um, originally, the, the, we were going to be spending a, a lot more time in the 80s. In fact, I think our entire first episode was 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 set in the 80s. We had uh, we had a couple of characters who we had to cut, and most regrettably, Tiff Tannen, the 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 hot young punk. Oh, we'll get to talk about her in episode three, though. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Edna, old, uh, the old version of Edna went through a number of uh, revisions to get her less scary. Uh, and, uh, She's think, still pretty scary. She's still pretty yeah, scary. Uh, but, uh, you know, making her actually fit within the uh, license uh, was a little tricky because even though Back to the Future is a broad license, uh, character-wise, she was almost a little too broad initially. Uh, but I think we finally hit a decent spot with her. One thing, uh, a quick bit, going back to AJ, I remember uh, one, of, one of my favorite times recording on this was like uh, the first day of recording um, with AJ and he came in and you know he's super excited to be there and never worked on a project this big huge Back to the Future fan and 20 minutes in uh, you know we're recording the voice trying to find it and uh, he was nailing all these lines and at one point in the middle of a take he just stopped and started laughing and all of us were like oh no what happened what? it's cut sorry what's going on and he was like I'm sorry I just I can't believe I'm doing this this is like a dream come true <laughs> and it was a really cool moment and then uh, he's like sorry I'm moving on and then just went back in and did like some crazy session where we nailed most of it it's good yeah. oh so I want to say that uh the scene that's coming up now, this was kind of my benchmark for the production where I, I kept coming back to watch the jumping through time scene and see it evolve. And it was just the sound effects, the uh, the effects, everything that came together were so awesome. Yeah. And it took a long time trying to get our effects right for the uh, DeLorean. Um, you know, it's probably, is it the, I think it may be the first time where we've had to actually seriously ape an existing movie's effects um, and get it right. Um, we, you know, we were given access to original sound effects from the, the, the original uh, yeah. um, movie, which was great. Uh, but uh, there's what, nine is it nine different special effects on the, the yeah. DeLorean for the, At the, least, uh, uh, the time yeah. jump? Maybe it's more than that. Yeah, from yeah. the flames to the little pew pew pews coming out to yeah. the stuff going around. Yeah. Oh, I, love, I love this part. And I would just load games yeah, just to watch the loading action. animation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, calling out Michael Peretta. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. definitely. Good job. Yeah. Like three weeks. Knocked it out of the park. Yeah. yeah. Oh, awesome. and the music. Yeah. And Eric Parsons on this cutscene. Oh, thanks. Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> yes, Beautiful. Good job. Yeah. Which was which is uh, storyboarded out and everything. Yeah. 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 The first time this one came together with with music, oh. effects, and everything. I, Beautiful. Yeah. I, I finally believed it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was fun giving that to you, and we're just like, okay, this has to be the best thing in the entire series. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. And you didn't see me for months. Yeah. <laughs> and here are our first. Whoa, that's oh. so beautiful. <laughs> our first experience with Danny Parker is his life starts go to going to hell. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I'm really happy that we our got lawyer. him in here and we didn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, didn't mention him. It was just. Yep. Kind of a subtle thing. Yeah. I like how we just start shooting at uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's what happens to Marty. Yeah, things are different in the 30s. He's yeah. drunk and disheveled there already, right? Yeah. <laughs> at this point. Yeah, look how much he's swerving. Of course. I love how he just causes a car accident. Yeah. He's like, eh, whatever. <laughs> he's probably fine. 
And the using using it back to the future trope. We will hide the car behind a billboard because that's what you do. Yes, that's flawless <laughs> security. And here's the iconic shot of town, which we also put a lot of work yes. into. Yeah. I realized very quickly that this set was a pain in the tuchus. It was, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Big. In every episode that it was in, yep. it was... Nearly killing our engines. And yeah. finding things to do here was always uh, was always challenging, but we always knew it had to be a centerpiece yeah. for for each for each episode. Getting the cameras right for every episode, we had to go back and do it again every time. Right, because yeah. it couldn't look the same. No, every episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's playing at the theater? Uh, <laughs> question. Is it? I think it's always Frankenstein. It's always Frankenstein. No, I see a Frankenstein in there. Me. <laughs> <laughs> It's a Shannon Nicholson, her first uh, her f uh, first time she's uh, voiced a character for Telltale. I think it's the first time she's done voiceover. She did a, a very good job. There are any number of little gags in here that you have to be really carefully looking for to notice. I know it's just an etiquette column, but I the shave and haircut one bit. Uh, Einstein doesn't like her. This is a clue, people. It's the law. Look it up. She's a vampire. She's a vampire. <laughs> That's why she didn't. She had no reflection in the, in the barber shop. See? How did how that know. shark sign end up in there? Yeah. It wasn't in there until like the very end of the first we, episode. We, we, realized, we realized we need to pepper the town with more things that were uh, evocative of the uh, or, uh, original movies. Uh, and a because movie we, don't, we don't have enough references to the original yeah. movies. So right? we needed a movie called yeah, a movie like Jaws, the 3D version from the future. So we just called it Shark. Um, there's Doc. In one D, I think. Doc. The actual real sharks. <laughs> the actual real meeting of Marty and Doc again, who's now calling himself Carl Sagan in one of the... So should we talk about Christopher Lloyd here? Or yeah, we should talk about Christopher, about Christopher Lloyd, Lloyd a lot. We're, we're all very happy that we got to work with Christopher Lloyd. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Definitely. That was a, a terrifying story, the, the first session when we were down there. And, um, like, he was super cool, totally up for the character, jump right back into it. But, uh, like, halfway through recording, Bob Gale showed up, which for me is a huge Back to the Future nerd was... Super intimidating, and he just came and sat right behind me in the studio. And we were like directing Chris Floyd, redoing the mall stuff, so it's like stuff they'd already done 25 years ago. That was pretty intimidating. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure. Yeah. Director boy. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you think you are? So, yeah, uh, Doc is going by Carl Sagan in this because of the old running gag in the movies of them choosing pseudonyms that are real people. And uh, I'm s if the not ghost of Carl Sagan is out there someplace, I'm very sorry. <laughs> uh, but we just fell in love with that. Uh, he'd be honored to be in this. Yeah. But he'd be very surprised to be a ghost. Yeah, that's true. That's what I was saying, the not ghost. Ah, kid. If one of those we, we spent a lot of time trying to get this scene to look very much like the scene, again, that we are uh, riffing on uh, in the mall shop uh, with a tannin and uh, uh, and one of uh, Marty's ancestors. In, in, in fact, this was, I, I remember just early on in the design process, this being something where, where De I think it was Dennis, was like, we've got to have... Uh, that a, a scene, suit gift, right? Yeah. We've got to have, and in fact, w it was not in the budget yeah. to have a, a diner, basically, yeah. at yeah. at one point, and uh, and and Dennis just burst into the producer's office and grabbed him by the lapels and said, "There's gonna be uh, yeah. a diner in yeah. this. You got it." And I think I got said, too angry about that one. <laughs> but, but I, but we were yeah, so then, thrilled. You know, and that was the other thing too. Is then we we're like, okay, we can have a diner, but it's on the other side of town. And I was like, it's got to be in the same, same spot. Place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got it. That's good. You really need young Emmett. Uh, Emmett. The, the Emmett Marty walk and talk. Oh, yes. 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 Forward for All right. We'll, we'll give Randy the floor here and let yeah. him talk about the <laughs> Emmett Marty walk and talk. Uh, what are we talking about? Um, <laughs> we experimented with a new style of gameplay, basically where you're in a dialogue and following behind Emmett, um, which creates all sorts of problems. 
Um, we were fixing bugs on just this last little bit in the game, and right up until the last minute, it was probably the most expensive puzzle we did <laughs> in the entire It's season. a dialogue puzzle. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, but you know what? It was a great, yeah, it's a great scene. Yeah, it's something yeah. different that we, that we try to do, having a moving character that you could jump into at any point in his, in his loop and... Uh, and have a number of things that you can do with them. And it, just, it kind of established the character and the relationship between the characters, which is so essential to the whole season. Uh, you know, and, and just and, and the character, the, just his distracted, uh, always on the move sort of personality. Thing, which, yeah. It's yeah. like to me, like Doc, the Doc Marty relationship, like Doc in the movies is always the frantic walking around, and Marty's always trying to catch up, and so it seemed perfect to introduce young Emmett with the, uh, the same kind of mechanic. Kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Um, and that gets to the whole thing about the season. Very early on, we realized we wanted, we wanted to totally topsy turvy most of the relationship. We wanted, you know, a Marty who's been through time, you know, several times now, uh, who's kind of a little more mature, having to deal with, you know, this young Emmett Brown who's, you know, this a gawky liberty teenager, gibbet. a liberty gibbet, yeah. Uh, <laughs> A you know, teenager who hasn't quite figured out what he wants to do in life and has got all these pressures to do something else with his life, um, making this critical decision. You know, where for Marty's dad, it's I got to kiss the girl. For young Emmett, it's I got to kiss science at some point. And that's actually part of what got me to work on this in the beginning. When I heard there was rumors that we might do a Back to the Future game, I was terrified because it's a huge part of my childhood. And uh, it was actually when Mike, you came by my desk one day and you were like. So what if we get to meet Emmett when he's young, and uh, what if there's a possibility he doesn't go into science because of something you do? And I was like, oh, I'm so in. So, <laughs> so this peanut puzzle, peanut that just, <laughs> oh God, uh, it gave us, uh, you know, that, that's one of the things I blocked out. I know it gave us troubles, but I don't, I, I do not know. What there, was were. there was shoe polish, shoe polish, polish there, involved. It was, was, it was, it was, it was a more involved puzzle. Yeah, so we point. Yeah, we cut it down to nothing, and to, that was why. To, the yeah, what the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why those peanuts are in the hat there. Yeah. Yeah. Originally, Kid Tannen might have ended up in blackface at some point. No, <laughs> no, I don't think he would have ever ended up in blackface. But there's, but yeah, there was also what, some something that you were getting, something, some, some ingredient from the diner that he hated, yeah. and then you put it at, yeah. it was, was it hot? Anyway. And you had to smell it on <laughs> Emmett's breath. Did, yeah, that's right. You had to yeah. smell it on Emmett's yeah. breath. Marmalade. Yeah. Marmalade. That's it. <laughs> Convoluted to say the least. Yes. In a good way. In a good way. In a, in a way. In a, in a way. <laughs> it started off as a more classic adventure game style puzzle and okay. turned into something a little more dynamic. Yeah, yeah. Which you know, this it was kind of par for the course for 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 this series. They used to call me. Well, we've been mentioning, uh, calling out some of our voice actors. James Arnold, James Arnold Arnold. Taylor as young Emmett Brown is awesome. He is awesome. Yeah, he's perfect. I was super scared about Emmett's voice going in, and then as soon as he started workshopping it, I mean, he pretty much came in with it, and it was like, oh, that is perfect. And we got no idea what he looks like, right? I know what he looks like. I've seen him online. You have? Yeah. Okay. Does he look like Emmett? No, really. He's uh, we he's uh, down in Santa Barbara, yeah. so we we dealt with him over the uh, over the phone. This is a puzzle that worked. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I love this puzzle. This is a puzzle we <clears throat> we honed down to a nice uh, fine fiddle. Uh, it's one of those uh, uh, one of those situations where if you just uh, Keep talking and show people how it's going to work. It eventually comes around. Yeah, it's and it's, uh, watch, you know, it's 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 difficult in games like this to have puzzles where two characters are working together on a goal, where you are work are working with someone else. But we really needed a moment where where Marty and Emmett were collaborating on something. So, so so this is just one of those one of those rare kinds of puzzles where that kind of dynamic really works. Yeah, yeah. and it is tricky because. One of the things we kept bumping our heads against all through the season is Emmett's smart. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yes. (laughs) And so in any situation where, you know, he and Marty are together, he should be able to tell you exactly what you need to do, and then you just have to do it. Uh, Unless there's a reason, as in this puzzle, where he can't tell you exactly what to do. Um, It's okay for Marty to be a little dumb, but Doc really should. (laughs) Yes. Exactly. And I don't. I mean, we maybe very briefly considered a game where we were we were occasionally playing 
doc, but we pretty much from the B and E knew that it, it, we, we were going to be Marty all the way because it's uh, he's the hero. Yeah, huh? Yeah, Marty's the guy who fixes his life, his parents' life, and Doc's life. I, I, I lied to you. And this is the scene that if you don't cry, you're not, you're not. Can I call out uh, Nick Herman on this one? Yeah. Yeah, he uh, was on another project at the time, but we, we pulled him over to do this, and uh, I'm extremely glad. Yeah, it's, it's heartbreaking with, uh, you know, because you kind of come to really like Emmett by this point and kind of betraying him. Yeah. I'll get it back to you, I promise. Marty is behaving a bit like a and jerk. And it. <laughs> but he's going to be a great inventor. Is he going to slug him? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Much later for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the cart. <laughs> <clears throat> the throttle at about eight. We had to build that cart because we couldn't figure out any way for Marty to carry that thing around. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, right? we're still not entirely sure, so we've already dragged it a long way to get here. Yeah. And then because none of Emmett's inventions really work. Yeah. I'm, also, I'm still just not sure what a rocket powered drill, <laughs> drill is. Yeah. <laughs> or a jet powered drill, for that or matter, which is maybe enough. Rocket powered drill. Dun 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 Yeah, that's painful. <laughs> yeah, that would, <laughs> that's gonna hurt. You're too late. Too late. The doc's not Some supposed to be. Some tough ID on that wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, I mean, it didn't matter what was powering the drill. It, it needed to get on the bike. That was the yeah, was, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Everything leads up to this. Everything leads up to this, which is. Yeah. And it, the other big sequence. Uh, uh, the, uh, I'm so yeah, glad uh, that we, we managed to keep the action yeah. the, close to the way we designed it for this sequence. Yeah. At great cost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <It's partially laughs> we, it's so worth it. Yeah. <laughs> We, yeah, we, there were some. There were some definitely some tough cells yeah. in this. <laughs> bike truck. Yeah. truck. Yeah, it's a bike. Shouldn't the, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, you don't think about it too hard. No. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the fun part. Definitely, like when I we got on and started, like, all right, cool. Let's, let's still talk to Pete. Let's figure out the animation and all this. And then we're like, wait, how is the bike on the truck? Wait, what's happening? Yeah, I don't know yet. Yeah. Just, uh, I don't know. Yeah, just like that, yes. Yeah, it, it works. Ah, yeah. We the definitely human bridge. The one thing the, we wanted to definitely do in this first episode is end it with a very traditional Back to the Future Cars on Road action sequence. Yeah, uh, and, yeah kind of and frenetic and things that could never physically happen. happen. <laughs> 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 Doc has really good balance. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's a remarkably spry, <laughs> non yeah, the, the human bridge yeah. is like one of those ideas that's, you know, an easy concept that is yes. not easy in execution. Yes. <laughs> and, oh, and we were on our, our, first, yeah. our first use of the manure gag. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly <laughs> not the last. <laughs> but, you know, we only did it, a, we only went there a couple times. So it I felt think like we, we did it enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. And oh, I'm so glad you didn't have the moon there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For a long time, we thought about going all Spielberg there and avoided doing that. Yeah. <laughs> did you know that would happen? I had a suspicion. I never. <laughs> Doc always kind of knew that thing would explode because a lot of this stuff explodes. And then it's the let's get the heck out of here before and, we yeah, do something and, and really forget wrong. about the dog. Forget about the dog. <laughs> <laughs> the first time, not the last time. He's not in the pound, is he? See, Doc remembers. Oh, ah, yeah. I think we've got bigger yeah. problems right now. And then classic Back to the Future uh, problem number one. Look Mark. at that font. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued, uh, join us again on the uh, second episode of Back to the Future, coming real soon. <laughs>